have, I want to look at how the church can live truth and love to those who proclaim truth and love as a people of God. And so two ways uh, here inside the text this morning. So number one, we can support ministers of the gospel. I'm going to phrase it this way. It's kind of two parts, but it's just number one. We can support ministers of the gospel physically and spiritually as a church. Water's Edge, we can support ministers of the gospel both physically and spiritually as a church. Let me begin with the spiritual side. John says here in his letter, the very beginning, I hope your soul is well also. And he says, I pray that your soul is well. I think he's speaking of spiritually, how are you walking with Christ? And John says, I'm praying for you in that regard. Now he says that, then he goes on to really focus on more physical things, like hospitality and money and finances to support the ministers. But he does have in here the spiritual well-being. And so although John does not focus on it in depth, we know as brothers and sisters in Christ as a church, our primary responsibility is a spiritual dynamic and is fleshed out in various ways through the physical, yes, but we are to pray for people. And so John has that in the very opening. Hey, I'm praying for you in this way. And so as a church family, how can we support those called out and sent out to proclaim truth in the gospel is we can pray for them. And so an application is we pray that you pray for the elders. We, we have been uh, set apart, uh, sent out, uh, called out to proclaim Christ. Uh, and so we need your prayers. And so just like John prayed for Caius, Caius was encouraged in praying for them. I believe Caius prayed for these men, these brothers in Christ who came to this town. And so we pray for those who are preaching and teaching the gospel. We do not want to do it uh, by ourselves. We do not want to do it independent of the body of Christ. We're in this together. And so the role, for example, this morning, you have a spokesperson uh, proclaim the gospel, proclaim the truth. That's myself this morning. But you have a role in it as well that as you're praying for myself and I'm praying for you, we're praying for each other, the elders are praying for the church family, then we're all in this together to see what God reveals to us to grow us in Christ through the word of God. In verses 5 and 6, John writes this, Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for these brothers. Check this out. Strangers as they are. I did not know them well. I believe he had a sermon. Uh, there was probably some testimony about them. Maybe John had sent a letter with the brothers to testify these are genuine brothers in Christ that are coming to teach at your church. But he says, uh, these brothers that are strangers to you, you have ministered to them, and they have come back and testified to your love before the church. Now, think about this. He says, it's a faithful thing, Caius, you do in all your efforts. And so what I see in the word all is a, is a plurality there, is a, is a uh, multiplicity. There's a, a variety of efforts. And so John tell all the ways that Caius helped the brothers, but I get the picture that, based on the testimony that came back to John, is that whatever those brothers needed, Caius was there to serve them while they were there serving truth and love in the name of Christ. And so Caius is being encouraged in how, they, how he met their needs physically in whatever way possible. One last principle here in regards to how the church family can live out truth and love to those who are called out to preach truth and love is this. We can support ministers of the gospel financially. We can support ministers of the gospel financially. And why do I say that? Look at verses 6b uh, through 8. The second half of, of verse 6 says this. He says to, to Caius, You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. Now these brothers have already come back and then with John. I think in John's writing he's saying, Listen, as they'll probably come back and teach again, you will always do well to send them on their journey and, and do so in a manner that glorifies God. And so what, what does it mean to send them on their journey? Like, hey, good to see you guys again. We'll, we'll see you later. In their context, that would have been supporting them some way financially. You, you, you're hospitable to them. Uh, you fed them. You helped serve in ministry. You created ministry opportunities for them. But now as they go, um, put some money in their pocket, if you will. Support them some way, somehow, so they can continue in the gospel. And do it not in just their scratching to get by, but do it in a manner worthy of, worthy of God, is what... John says to Caius. And then he goes on. He says, For they have gone out for the sake of the name. They're not about money. You catch that right here? In verse 7, For they have gone out for what? The sake of the name. We already said, Who do you think the sake of the name is? Jesus. There is one name under heaven by which all men uh, must be saved, and that name is the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess someday that Jesus Christ is Lord. Faithful ministers of the gospel do not go out in the name of money or for the fame of money. They go out in the name of, for the sake of Jesus. 